talked about the whole graph scenes config file. Let's actually try and see if we can make a scene. So I'm gonna try and animate, say, y is equal to. A huge thanks to Brian for sponsoring this video. Good morning, fellow mathematicians. Way you come back to another Menem cast with my boy Vivek. Hello. <laughs> It's Vivek yet again. Um, yeah, as you have seen in previous episodes, you need to know about Python and basic programming skills. So if you don't know about any of the Python stuff, make sure to check out brilliant.org. They have a lot of Python related content on there and you can learn basic programming there. So check it out. Now for the main Menem cast. Vivek, what are we going to do today? So we're going to talk about the config files within classes and then we're going to talk a little bit about graphing and parametric functions and function graphs. Um, I think Vivek is going to guide us through this today, mostly because we didn't really talk about what we are going to do. We are just going to talk about so-called configurations, configs in your Menem scene. And they basically just set up your coordinate system, for example. And after we set up the coordinate system, we are going to give you a little sneak peek about what we are going to do in the next Menem cast, namely, well, graphing functions in some way. Yeah, so now we're gonna talk about config files. So the reason why config files are important because we can pass parameters to say our graph scene or other scenes we're talking about, and even if we create our own scene. So that's what we're gonna do today. I'm gonna show you how we can create our own type of scene and it's gonna make things a lot more like simpler. So for, for example, let's say, let me just do the import. And let's say that I'm trying to make a file a video that just shows numbers. But each time I want to show a number, I don't want to make a new scene that says like, okay, we have the number and I don't want to do this each time. So let's say I want to show the number two. So I would say two scene. Yeah, so let's say I want to do two, three, four, five, six, seven. And I don't want to do it each time. I don't want to say right of two. I don't want to show this whole thing each time. So what we could do is I could define something called a, let's say number scene, number scene. And let's assume that we have a variable num. That variable num is going to refer to this two or three or whatever we want inside the text module. So in here, I'm going to say t is equal to text, mobject, not text, tech, mobject of self.num. I said we already assume that we have this self.num variable, so we can't actually run this number scene. It's simply a way for us to, it's like a template. So we can say self.play. Right of self the num sorry t self the way. So if we if we try to run number scene, I'll show you over here. It's not gonna it's not gonna work because because self the num isn't defined. Yeah, it's like a function that you didn't assign any value to. So so you can't really let something run that that yeah yeah exactly hasn't anything assigned to it basically. So if I run this. Here it says this number scene has no attribute num, but now I want to create two scenes. So I'm just going to delete this. Actually, I'm going to just leave it there for you to reference. I'm going to say class two scene, scene. And then instead of doing the construct, not scene, sorry, let's inherit from number scene. So I'm inheriting from number scene. So it's going to pass all of these functions down, including the scene functions. So I already have a construct function. All I'm missing is self.num. So I either I could say, I can just say config and within the config, I can put it num as two. So now this becomes self.num because in this, in the whole manum thing, it takes this config variable and it assigns all of these variables to class variables. That's why it, this config is important. So over here, self the num will become two for this case. So if I run two scene, oh, okay. And shouldn't you put I it? I did not. Oh, there we go. Oh, okay. So if I want to have two scene and three scene, that's also 
doable. So three scene. So this is where it go ties back to the whole, you need to have some object oriented programming experience. And this will help you understand a lot of what it means to inherit classes and things. So one thing that you would learn from object oriented programming is that when you inherit a class, you still take down all its methods and stuff. So that's where the construct comes from. You would think, how is it running this if there's no construct within my class and the constructs over here? There we go. Yeah, Tracy. So next up, we are going to just talk about graphing. So in general, if you want to get your hands on a coordinate system that you want to graph later on, you are going to define yourself yet again such a config class. Um, I have a file prepared here. This was from my Fibonacci video. So that's a lot of script that we are having here. Um, but the most important thing is that you are going to define yourself a graphing graph scene in this case. Then we have the config configuration that Vivek already just presented. And you can find the exact config down there in the description. It consists of a lot of parameters. I for myself copy pasted it out of Free Blue One Brown's GitHub. Just because um, when I started with Menem, I didn't know about all those parameters. And if you have watched the last episode, you might know that, that Vivek presented like another editor to you where you can right click on those parameters and it's going to tell you a few things about um, what, uh, what they have as properties and, and what you can change, like for example, the radius parameter that you can change. So what we have in here are, for example, if we just want to have a simple graph scene, not a 3D graph scene, it's just going to consist of two axes, the X and the Y axis. And a few parameters that are kind of um, obvious that you can set are, for example, the X minimum and the X maximum, as well as the Y, uh, <coughs> as the y parameters. I'm terribly sorry. Other than that, you can set yourself the X axis width. Um, I'm not certain what this X axis width does. Do, do you know what this does, Vivek? Yeah, so you know how you have the X axis and the Y axis? You might want some of them to be, say, thicker than the others. Oh, all right, now I get it. Now I get it. Yeah. All right, like now the I know what this of the line, yeah. yeah. Now I know what this parameter does. The, the thing is, um, if you just copy paste it like me, th there are going to be so many parameters that you are not going to use, like the, um, I don't know, like the default Riemann start color. Riemann start color, I'm terribly sorry that the English boy came through here. Um, it, <laughs> it overtook the German boy. But but if you start out with graphing stuff, the, the most Im important things are just going to be the tick frequency, then the leftmost tick and the rightmost tick, and also the, the labels on the axis. And you can play around with those parameters like the axis colors, and most of the stuff is really self-explanatory. Anything else you would want to say about this, Vivek? Yeah, so the other most important ones are, of course, X minimum and X maximum, and Y minimum and Y maximum. Yes, so um, I, I for myself like to uh, um, put the coordinate system out of the picture, out of the, the frame such that is such that we get like um, really uh, um, lines that, that go from the outmost left point to the outmost right point and up and down com completely ac across, the, across the screen. But you can uh, basically stop at, at one x, y, um, just at the one and negative one values. And then you are just going to have like a really tiny coordinate system. That's also something that you can do. I think Papa Flammy touched on this earlier, but one thing you can do is you don't really have to copy and paste every single parameter. So over here on my screen, for example, I have this differ integral class. This is an animation I made for my fractional derivative video. I think Papa Flammy can put it an animation which I'm talking about on the screen over here but over here in my config I only have these many compared to the all of those that uh, Papa Flammy put up so you don't really have to put all of them you can only put the ones you want so typically when I do it I just start out with an empty config and then put them as I need them so that it doesn't look like cluttered yeah um, I'm still a noob when it comes to Menem this is why I have Vivek here um... <laughs> To my assistant. Oh, I'm honest about that. Um, I just know what I know and it's not too much. Like I said, I'm also not a Python pro. Um, this, is why I this is why I have Vivek here because he's well more knowledgeable about stuff like this. But I still try to um, put some information out for you. <laughs> okay, so now that Papa Flammy talked about the whole graph scenes config file, let's actually try and see if we can make a scene. 
So I'm gonna try and animate say y is equal to x squared. So we're gonna do class parabola graph. And then we're gonna inherit from graph scene. And in the config, I'm just gonna say, okay, I want my x min to be five. <laughs> I don't know, let's say negative two and then I think this is going to look pretty bad, but let's just try it anyways. There Doesn't matter. Construct self. Yeah. So the way we set up the axes is self.setup underscore axes. So what this does, it just draws the axes. And then to get our functions, like to get the actual function graph, what we can do is we can do self.get underscore function or func, get func, get graph, get graph. Get, get graph, yeah. And then we need to... Yeah, and then we need to pass in the actual function. So the way we can do this is we can say def say function and then uh, self comma x. And then we'll just say return x squared. So I can pass func over here and then I'll say f is equal to and then self dot play yeah, so right. So for the def dot, dot func, this is just the, the function that he is going to de define him himself. So like the x squared function is yeah. going to be the parabola, and yeah, just yeah. as little information. So if you want to say a linear function, you could do like yeah, whatever. X, <laughs> like the so... identity. <laughs> <laughs> One mistake I made was self dot func because I'm defining it yeah. as a class. Yeah, I'm going function. to put it as an annotation. There we go. And there we go. It's not that bad. So I'll just make this a bit better by doing say 0.25. Yes. So from math, we know that this is just gonna squeeze the graph down. So if I wait for this. Okay. There we go, okay. So typically over here, I define self a func as a function over here. And then I passed it into here, but one thing that's pretty common is since this is such a small function, we can take advantage of lambda functions. So lambda functions are just one line functions. So for example, I could say lambda and my input is x. I can return, say, 0 0.25 times math.pal x. So this is a 0 0.25 times x squared. Oh. That's interesting. As a function. So this does the exact same thing. And it just, you don't need the whole def function. Oh, sorry, I'm so stupid. You don't need the return. Oh yeah, sure, sure. You're not you know. yeah, you are not defining yourself a new function. Yeah. There we go. And this already does it for today with the Menem cast. It's just a small one, but this time we didn't sit through it like for one and a half hours as usual. Um, it's, it's kind of more relaxing this time, but it's a nice fundamental thing that we did here today and, and it's pretty easy to do. And if you want more information, maybe your Vivek can find another PDF file or something, maybe on some GitHub page. Uh, I don't know if there are any other resources, Vivek. I'll see if I can link a few in the description. Yeah, sure. Um, if there are any, you can find it down there in the description. Other than that, we can post the source, uh, source the, the source code yet again down there. And other than that, Vivek, thank you for joining me and I bid you farewell. But as mentioned at the beginning of the video, I would like to thank Green.org for sponsoring yet another video of the Menem cast. The last two videos gave you a pretty good idea of how much Python and programming knowledge is really required to handle animating with Menem. So if you are not yet familiar with all the fundamentals and basic concepts of Python, I encourage you to try out Brain today. Brain is an online learning platform and app that teaches you all things STEM. So with their over 60 interactive courses in maths, sciences and computer sciences, they really get you prepared for all things in your STEM career. If you wish to get a deep and intuitive understanding of programming with Python and also other computer science related topics, make sure to check out their amazing programming with Python or their brand new cryptocurrency course that comes with a ton of interactive exercises. 
And the best thing about their Python course is that Brian implemented the Python interface into their courses, which is just absolutely amazing. So if this feels like something for you, make sure to check out the link at the top of the description. With it, you can try out Brian for completely free. You can try out all the Python courses for starters and it's such a great deal. Also, the first 200 people to use the link get 20% off an annual premium subscription and that's a really good deal if you ask me. So try it out and support the channel this way. I thank you guys for watching. If you did enjoy this video, please like, subscribe, recommend channel if you like. Don't forget to subscribe to my boy Vivek. He's doing such a great job on his channel VCubing X. So seriously, subscribe to him. He's also giving me great assistance here on the Man and Cast. And other than that, I'm wishing you guys a flam the day. Ciao. Toll. Anton? 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 Ja, du bist Anton. Anton?